Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Tonight, I've got a little special one to review. I've been waiting all year for this. Sadler's Peaky Blinders Christmas Pudding Stout. Uh, for me, drank it last year, first time I'd come across it. And uh, 6% goodness, first time I'd come across it last year. And it was immense. Only had one bottle. And boy, I wish I'd have got more. Went out today to B&M stores, and there it is sitting on the shelf, £1.79 a bottle. I mean, yesterday I went to Sadler's Brewery and I couldn't get it, because the brewery shop wasn't open, uh, issues apparently, or wasn't ready to be open, whatever. So, it says that you see bronze and black. Bloody hell, my eyes are crap. Um, what does it say up there? No? Yeah. You see, oh. You know, ebony black rather. Smell is cocoa, roasted and nutty. Taste is subtle spice. Sultanas, rich, sweet and smooth. And it's on sale at Sadler's at the moment. Dun, dun, dun. 12 case, bottle case, £22.97. So not a bad deal. You know, if you can't get it from a shop near you, and it's there. If you do see it at B&M, this sells out incredibly fast. Uh, I was told by the person on the shop floor that it was full yesterday, the whole shelf. And we're talking a plinth, four foot plinth, which can hold a hell of a lot of cases and the whole lot gone. So that tells you something. Bar Humbug also was, uh, had a good whack. And Rudolph had been, you know, had a good whack at as well. So, here's the pour. You know, sometimes you get an anticipation, you know, of a beer, when you know it's a good beer, and there you are, ready to pour that beer out again, and, you know, it's been a year. Oh, smell that beautiful, malty aroma. So, yeah, close to black, ebony black colour. Um, beige head. It's just reached room temperature. I didn't want to do it at lower than that. On the nose, cocoa. There's a toastiness there, a roastiness, you know. There's a lot of flavour. You know, the aroma, you know some beers, I test some beers and I'm there, and I'm thinking, I've got to review this, but I can't smell anything. And like this, this delivers. coffee wow this is a beer to me this is a beer reviewers dream beer to review it is absolutely it's got it it looks good smells fantastic and uh cheers Gotta say, it's a contender. You know, it's a contender for the top spot. It's bloody amazing beer. Oh dear. Uh, you know, some beers are good. This is one of the. I put it as one of the top five in the country. You know, it's got taste. Excellent. So when they say Christmas pudding stout, yeah, you're getting all that. You know, there's so much complex flavours. The flavours are in abundance. How the hell do you get all them flavours in a beer? It just baffles me. I mean, I've been a beer fan for a long, long time. Um, only the last, what are we now, 2019, probably the last 10 or 12 years, I've really uh, been a real ale fan. But... the explosion of beers that have taste and aroma beyond you know beyond the normal is is amazing and the temperature you drink this at makes a vast difference i mean like like you know everything at the right time, 
the right place, everything's got a got a temperature and a setting, you know, that suits it. Uh, in the summer months, this may not be the beer it is now, um, but for me, wow! So it says on the bottle, it says you can have it on its own in cakes, puddings, and even on ice cream. I mean, uh, no, I'll have it in a bottle. But I can imagine, you know, in a, in a pie, wow, you know, the flavour from this would really come through in, in a good steak and kidney pie sort of thing. I remember five minutes in. Really, to, to give this its proper, you know, to drink it fast, to me, is, is a crime. You know, I know people say to me, oh, your beer reviews are a bit long. Yeah, but sometimes it's because, you know, you need to take the beer slow to fully get the best out of the beer. And I was so wishing to try this yesterday, you know, from cask. Didn't have it on cask. Uh, maybe if I'd have waited to go for the brewery tour in, into December, then I'd have got it, you know, but, hey, I, you know, I didn't want to run into, because it was busy yesterday on the brewery tour. There was a good 30 people there, good 30 people. And at times it was a little hard to hear the person, uh, although his, his enthusiasm for his job was immense, you know. Um, and it's funny that he... Uh, this brewer was saying that um, they used a closed close system fermentation vessels, pretty much like home brewers do. We put a lid on and put an airlock on. Because obviously you don't want anything getting in. Marston's use their union brewing system, which obviously air can get in. And can that change the brew? Yeah, I think it can. You know, unless the air around... Um, stops that um you know i don't know about the air filters inside the factory whether that's uh, you know it's an interesting one of these days i will go to the marston's uh, brewery tour as well because it's great listening to other brewers i mean the only thing I, I it's a pity we didn't get to try yesterday with some experimental brews sample beers and that now that would have been great we did get two pints of beer so and the, and the lunch the lunch was lovely but uh, it's always nice to be able to have a bit of something, you know, a taste of something that's not even got on the market yet, or growing to be coming on the market at a later date, and using you as guinea pigs. I, I don't mind being a guinea pig for anybody. I mean, if, if companies were to send me beers to review, and, you know, give my honest viewpoint of, even if it's in private, I wouldn't mind doing that. And certainly if, it, if it's on air, they give me, I mean, um, when I worked at Sainsbury's, I was handed by the, the reps. There's a rep there. She was, she was a rep for Heineken. Heineken also make Fosters, Strongbow, and uh, quite a lot of brands. You know, as under theirs. At Bournemouth, I think. Um, I used to know them all, but you know, you leave work and you leave that environment, you forget. But she handed me a tin, uh, a plain tin. So let's try that at home. And this was a good six months before it came out in the shops. Strongbow's dark fruit cider. And I gave it a, I told it was amazing. It was like Ribena, but alcoholic Ribena. So it was fantastic. And it's sold pretty damn well since it's come out. And in fact, other companies are emulating it. Even Copperberg are emulating it. So, you know, sometimes, you know, um, it, to be at the forefront is, is an ex exciting thing. But anyway. Back to this. Yes, this is quality. Quality beyond most other beers out there. Not quite full on room temperature. It's not cold, but it's not. I'd rather drink this warm. You know, and even if it's like 22, 23 degrees in the house. To me, that's the perfect temperature to drink this fella. Uh, retaining the head well, so it's got good carbonation and lacing, but the aroma and the taste. Tr 
truly one of the best uh, Christmas ales, if not one of the best ales in the country. I mean, this sits, this, I'm not going to give it a score, just so I'll get to the bottom of the glass. Uh, I'm just reminiscing of last year when I drank it for the first time. I went, walked into B&M, this was B&M again last year, you know, my hat is off to them fellas. I walked in and I seen it, I thought, ooh, Christmas pudding start, I thought, that's up, you know, Raggy Avenue, is it well? Got it home, tried it, did the review. The review was on here from last year. And obviously the channel was a lot smaller then. The channel's grown now. And it may be a yearly review thing because, to be fair, as channels grow, um, beers can change, obviously, as well. They can tweak the beer. Sometimes it, they can get worse. Sometimes they can get better, you know. So I'm glad to say that this is equally as good as last year, if not slightly better, you know. So against some of my favourite beers, um, yeah, it, uh, it kind of is up, is up there. Take out the alcohol content, the strength of Golden Pride, or um, or the oh bloody hell, what's it called? The Fuller's one, um, the boxed one. Is it Vintage Ale? It hasn't got the strength for them. Similar in strength to King Goblin at six point six percent, and for me. It's on a par with King Goblin, you know. Um, very nice. God knows how to make it. I don't know how they get all them flavours in there. I mean, for me, the, the, the one bit I'd love to see is uh, a rum and a rum and raisin imperial stout because i had one at nottingham's recent uh, robin Hood beer festival and the taste of that was immense it was like nine percent something along them lines but it was fantastic you know and uh, it had it had everything going for it but obviously i can't review it uh, you know i can't even remember who made it i'd had a few to drink obviously but um that was lovely but anyway back to this fella yeah, an absolute barnstorming beer. So, ebony black in colour, uh, beige tan head, um, good carbonation and lacing throughout. I think at the bottom it's still got a head on it. The aroma, beautiful aroma. I mean, I just picked out some of the in the aroma, you know, the roastiness, cocoa, uh, toasted flavours. But there's a lot more there. Same in the taste. You know, you it, for me. It's Christmas pudding in the glass, you know. I mean, fucking hell, Christmas pudding taste. I mean, I've still got Christmas pudding in, in the cupboard from last year. That's still haven't. I bought it before Christmas, but this is a good thing. Yeah, got the Christmas pudding, got the brandy uh, sauce. Still haven't had it. And uh, I will do it one of these days. But, um, yeah. Wow. Right, the inevitable. So, it is definitely a top 10 beer. There's no shadow of a doubt there. I'm going to put this on a level with my King Goblin as my favourite beer. I cannot remember what I gave King Goblin. But I'm going to give this fella a 4.75 out of 5. Which is probably the, the highest or second highest score I've given to any beers and that's a lot of beers you know I've tasted a lot of good beers at, you know out there but this is something special a true perler of a Christmas beer absolutely brilliant and if you can get yourself a bottle please do so please try it compare it and if you can I mean I may do a battle of the beer, top beers because I've also got two bottles of King Goblin in the back there as well and I've got another bottle of this and I think I'm going to do a battle of the beers to decide my favourite beer it's got to be done hasn't it anyway thanks for watching thanks to everybody who subscribes and uh, you know the closer it pushes me to that thousand um, 
thousand subscribers, the, you know, that'd be great. Because then I can do live reviews with my phone, which is better than this bloody camera. And it's live, you know, I can actually talk as well and answer questions as I'm reviewing. Which I think is a great thing, you know. I mean, I'm not the most knowledgeable, I know something, you know. I know a bit, but um, yeah. Thanks for watching, see you soon.